This is the second of three videos um, that I hope to do on um, inverse trig functions and their transformations. Um, so on this one, they're, they're giving us a function. They're asking us to graph its state, its domain, and range. And then we're going to talk about um, how we can find its inverse and what we need to do. Um, so to begin with, this is cosine. It's been um, pulled vertically by a factor of 2 and then shifted down 1. So we're going to go 1, 2, something like this. Uh, so we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. This would have happened by 2 pi because we didn't change the period. Here's pi. This is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. Um, and likewise, okay, so we have something like this. where, And we know, pretend I can draw. Okay, we know that our domain is all real. And our range now, since we stretched it by a factor of 2 and then shifted it down 1, we're now going from negative 3 to positive 1. Um, but when they say restrict the domain of f so that uh, f, the inverse is a function, this wouldn't, like if I tried to take the inverse of this, I'd get something squirrely like this, and it, um, and it wouldn't be a function, which is no good. So what we want to do is we want to get, <coughs> my concavity kind of bothers me here, this is concave down, and this becomes concave up. So, sorry about that. Um, what we're going to do is we want to get every y value to happen just once. So this is the point 0, 1. Here is the point pi over 2, negative 1. And here is the point pi, negative 3. And we're going to restrict the domain to just being this, because that would give us every y value, but every y value only happening one time. So it says restrict the domain so that the inverse is a function. Okay, we will. We're going to go from 0 to pi. That's our new, the new domain um, when we restrict the domain of the original function. So now when we go to graph the inverse, we can switch our x and our y values. Okay, I had the point 0, 1, so that tells me I have the point 1, 0. And then I had the point uh, pi over 2, negative 1. So now I want the point, okay, what is this? This is the point 1, 0. I want the point negative 1, so here's negative 1, uh, pi over 2. Let's say that this is pi over 2. So here's negative 1, pi over 2. And then I need the point negative 3, 1, 2, 3. If this is pi, here's, if this is pi over 2, sorry. This is about pi, and we're here-ish. Okay, and so we have something kind of like that is our graph. Um, and so the domain of this is going from negative 3 to positive 1. Oh, I labeled that as a coordinate, and the rest is tick marks, but you know what I'm doing. The domain went from negative 3 to positive 1. The range now goes from 0 to pi, and you'll notice the domain of this needed to be the range of the original, and it was. The range here should be the domain of the original, but if I use this domain, it would not be a function. So I have to use this restricted domain right here. 